Your website is the mousetrap. Your content is the cheese. Welcome to Content Matters with Barry Feldman and Andy Crestina. People crave information and people crave visuals. And when you put information and visuals together, you get a super popular format for content on the internet, the infographic. What's up with that, man? I don't, I don't, I don't know if I saw that coming, but I make infographics and I, I guess I made my first one because I thought I better try this and I'm addicted now because they work like mad. They're powerful. They're powerful. It's just, uh, it's something about it. It's easily digestible. It's easily shareable. It's something you can scan. It's like just, it's sexy expectation differently. It's just as a format, it's dominant. It's became super popular years ago and has maintained that, that uh, magnetic force. I don't think they're going away. We're living in a visual world. Yes, we are. And uh, <laughs> that's why infographics matter. So let's jump into it. Here is Andy and Barry on Content Matters Podcast. And we're going to get into some practical advice here about infographics. Um, Barry, kick us off. Well, they matter for a lot of reason. And I think, you know, we, we sort of tackled like, they matter mostly like the first time I ever wrote about the magic of infographics was simply the thing you need to know most about infographics is people love them. Right. So, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, McDonald's has sold a lot of hamburgers because people like low prices and convenient fast service and hamburgers. So you have to uh, cater to people's tastes and infographics Mm -hmm. marry uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of different tastes into a, a digestible format that people appreciate. But I think the real magic of infographics from a content marketer's point of view is that they are a fast track to reach. You know, if your goal is to increase reach, you will achieve it with probably the minimal amount of effort uh, conceivable with an infographic if it's a great infographic. Mm -hmm. And that's true for big blogs and small blogs and everything in between. Um, Weren't you just telling me that some of the top blogs, some of the top marketing blogs, competitive space, have infographics as their most popular, most shared pieces of content? Yeah, I was. I mean, sort of from a Barry Feldman centric point of view, but I'm I'm obviously conscious, uh, aware, and a little competitive too about how my posts do uh, when I sell them to somebody or when I contribute them to somebody. So really, it doesn't really matter how, how they come to be. I like them to perform well and i'd like people to come back to me so i use buzzzoom and i trace myself to the uh, site i trace myself to the post uh, i trace myself to time periods on any particular place where i contribute a lot Uh, marketing props for instance is the best answer to this or the best example of this if you look at like how marketing props stuff is being shared and in buzzzoom i'm primarily looking Mm -hmm. at shares Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll see uh, my name attached to it well, I've given them uh, probably a, at least a post a month for the last 12 months, mm-hmm. and about half of them have infographics, and they're killing it. You know, they're, they're yeah. beating, beating the other ones by a mile. So B2B, B2C, I don't know that you can really put a, put a, a wall around it. I think infographics should be at least considered for almost anybody's content program. Uh, and one of the big reasons for that is that it's just another way. It feels fresh. Even if you take something that's a well-worn topic, you've written about a lot that uh, has been in heavy social rotation for a while in a text format, just put that thing into the infographic format and it will sparkle like new and attract people like nothing else. It's a repurposing tool, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you want to do with your content? Um, you know, you want um, people to read it you know, people to share it. And so uh, guest blogging comes back into play here. It's easy for me to make an infographic. You and I made an infographic. We've talked about it on the program. Mm-hmm. It's always, always hard for me to tell um, how many people are paying attention to every show. But we took uh, your research, which is obviously a very good idea for an infographic about um, blogging, mm-hmm. and packaged it as uh, how do you compare to uh, other bloggers? We called it, uh, what it do you remember the title? You, uh, it was, yeah. How do you uh, compare to serious business bloggers? That's it. Yep. Serious bloggers. Exactly right. How do you compare? So we, we mostly used uh, research based on your uh, thousand plus survey of bloggers, but it's interesting research. It's an annual thing and, and it has a title that sort of draws you in. And so if I want, or you want to place that piece on a high profile blog, 
we don't have that much work to do. We have an email to write and we uh-huh. can say, here it is because it already exists. And we could say, if you'd like to run it, I'll give you a 200 word post. You know, if you get, you don't want to give them a thousand word post because then the infographic is going to be so far, far down the page, nobody's going to read it. So it's an invitation to, to increase your reach on really popular sites, especially where uh, the formula has proven or the statistics or the analytics have proven that they, they do well with infographics. Well, you went fast there, but let me unpack that because that's really interesting and important. We took a piece of research that was interesting, unique, original content, repackaged it as an infographic. And then what Barry kind of went fast through just now, but is but matters a lot, is he then pitched that as a centerpiece of an, a small original post with some new paragraphs at the top and some different insights and, and takes on the research and shared it with everyone and posted it to everyone and pitched it to everyone. And all these different websites started picking it up because you look at the infographic and it's like, yeah, it looks great. Like this is like, this is high quality stuff. And it just opened a lot of doors during that outreach. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, I can, I can, I mean, we, I guess we're, we're done with it. You know, it's not, it's not time for the 2016 edition, but I could do it again tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that. Yeah, yeah, because um, it's taking a quality piece and it's putting it in a super digestible, easy to consume, easy to promote format. Yeah, but it, that was the trick too, right? It was the it was the uh, the repurposing, the designing of it. Yeah, yeah. When you when you published it, it was a big hit, and uh, you put a lot of thought into its title and and optimizing it for search. And it was a series of graphs, you know. And I suppose that the infographic, in a way, is too. But we, I was. Um, kind of critical about it you know i think it helps just to go filter through another series of eyes and another content marketer and we i simplified it i dropped stuff uh you know i i collaborated with the designer such that it was super skimmable and consumable and it's a great piece about um you know blogging yeah so how about some practical design tips what uh what do we have for people here on uh, how to make a great infographic well I'm only so qualified, but I guess I know what I like, and I've probably done 30 to 50 of them now. So perhaps maybe uh, mm-hmm. my point of view matters. But I'm not, you know, let's not, let's say I, I'm not really an infographic designer. I think I, I really feel that uh, the infographic I've rejected. I have a lot of uh, I have and a lot. I have a handful of partners that do infographics for me uh, in sort of a trade arrangement. You know, I I, I create the idea and the copy and they create the design and I kick them back. I reject it a lot. If the top doesn't satisfy me because the top to me is the same thing as the image on a blog post. It's probably going to be cropped two by one. And I envision that how it's going to be shared mm-hmm. on Twitter or slide share and stuff. So it needs to be like a little poster that says, keep reading, man. You know, it's, it needs to mm-hmm. have the title and it needs to have simplicity. So I think if you have to have one, uh, idea for design. That's it. Make the top uh, sing as it would uh, on social media, and uh, you know, think about Pinterest and Twitter and so forth. And then, you know, as you make your way down the page, make it interesting, make it match your brand. Um, m- maybe break up ideas if there's a list. You know, then uh, mm-hmm. maybe, like break break the mold by throwing in some data. If it's all data, may break the mold by throwing in a list. Mm-hmm. And then the footer is where the branding goes. Cite your resources. Uh, well, what do you got for design? Any additional thoughts? Yeah. One of the things that I'm kind of a stickler for is the amount of text scannability and legibility. I don't like to see a designer come back with anything that's got text that's too small or text that's too long. Basically, the promise of the infographic is that it's something that's very quickly consumed. So you really don't want to make the reader work for it by giving them, I mean, this is the opposite of text. That's the point. So keep the paragraphs very short and you're basically in infographic design and in any kind of web design, you're really controlling the eye of the visitor. This is a Jedi mind trick. You're supposed to be as a designer guiding exactly what they see at every scroll depth. Now these are very tall graphics. That's, that's the point and that's the format. So there's not a height limit. That's not the concern. Give yourself some space, leave some breathing room. Don't crowd your elements too close together and don't start to stack, you know, put like it's, two and three and four and five columns into this little, you know, 800 pixel wide image. So give their, give space, not too much text and pay attention to what you want the most visually prominent thing to be at each scroll depth, gently guiding the visitor's eyes down through the page, making it very easy for them to keep going and keep learning. 
Yeah, I think there's a little bit of uh, killing your babies, if you will, there. You know, they, it has to be skimmable. It has to be a fa- fast consumption. You know, the reason why people love infographics or one of them is uh, they're visual learners. And so if it basically is just, you know, a, a, a blog post with a color background, it's not an infographic. No, definitely not. Um, no, I didn't know you'd done that many. You said like 30 to 50 of these. Okay. I'm going to call you an art director now. Yeah, I think you are definitely qualified and you're, the, you're a great person to talk to about this because you go through the process. Tell us about the process. How do you get it done? If you're not the designer and most of our listeners are not going to be infographics designers, how do you get it done? All right. I, uh, I certainly had to uh, solve that problem because infographics are difficult to do. And I think if you were to do it yourself without the modern tools and templates and services, you'd probably do it in Illustrator. And Illustrator is an expensive and difficult program, and therefore most people definitely don't want to hear that as the answer. And so, uh, you know, I I hate hate Illustrator. (laughs) Horrible. And we'd like to thank our sponsors, Adobe. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not paying us for this. I don't know. I don't think anybody feels any differently about Illustrator unless you've studied it. You know, I, I don't hate Photoshop, but I it was no picnic learning it. Um, but, you know, I had a passion for digital photography, so I learned it. So, yeah, so you don't want to do it in info in a, in a Mm-hmm. Illustrator. <laughs> that program, uh, unless you have to. So you want to find a, an effective and affordable way to do it. And I guess I've settled on four of them. One is you do it yourself, and and, and not everybody wants to do that. But mm-hmm. PictoChart, Vengage, VizMe, Canva, the companies that are in the template-based design business, mm-hmm. usually freemium model, have made it so that if you can you can accomplish remarkable things yourself say that say that again slowly name some of the tools that you can use to do the diy approach well i gotta say visme first because they're helping us uh, for a lot of uh, collaborative projects and visme focuses on uh, presentations and infographics vengage came along late but has a popular tool and i've collaborated with them too canva just keeps ex- expanding their portfolio of things you can design and i i'll do an infographic just like as embellishment for uh you know, a blog post, like a mini infographic and Canva mm-hmm. makes it really easy. Like I just did one and it was a little timeline, you know, I just took out the timeline that existed and filled it in with my timeline. And um, then there's a whole school of, of companies and PictoChart was my favorite, but visually is one of them. And mm-hmm. uh, boy, I'm going to, I'm going to offend those that I leave out, but there's quite a few of companies that specialize in template based uh, infographic creation. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and we'll include even the ones that we forgot during this recording uh, on the show notes, uh, whether you listen to us on uh, FeldmanCreative.com or on OrbitMedia.com's blog. Uh, so, okay. yeah, so you can get it done. Yeah, so you, you can do it yourself, and you, you, can, go, you can go crude. You know, HubSpot uh, gives you templates to do them with PowerPoint. I, I don't think I would do that, but if you're doing your first one, you could, or if, you, you know, if it wasn't going to be published, maybe it was going to be presented on the screen uh, in a presentation, that's fine. You can create partnerships, and I've done that a lot, and you and I have both done that a lot. And so the, uh, the infographic designer, he might be an up-and-comer on uh, Upwork. You know, I think I found my first one on a LinkedIn group that was about infographics. And now I'm working with the leaders in infographic products, SaaS-based products, saying my contribution to the party will be the idea. Mm-hmm. copy and your contribution to the party will be the design and so that might work for you in your field that uh kind of depends but a partnership could you know it could be partially paid it could be partially trade you could uh, hire a designer obviously mm-hmm. and uh, there's affordable that's, ways to do that like yeah. fiverr that's, what's that gonna run what's that gonna run uh run me if i hire an infographic designer I would say on the cheap, it could be in the hundreds, such as one, two, or three, one, two, or three hundred, like uh, like you might find them on, on Fiverr or 99designs. And like, like 99designs is kind of a cool deal where uh, people might compete for the business. Mm-hmm. Um, I've gone to Upwork where freelancers are largely all over the world and working at different uh, wages. And uh, I think... Um, I'm thinking of the company Info Brands that helped us with the one we were talking about before. And that was in the hundreds. And then um, 
you, you often will see prices in the thousands. Sure. It's not out of bounds, but I think for that, you should expect that company to have the idea for the infographics, more of a full service approach. Uh, you get what you pay for. Uh, you know, there's the level goes all the way up to the things that uh, have truly gone viral and produced amazing results. And you could pay thousands for sure, five thousand, I think, on some of the uh, for some of the high level pros, like a Jesse level kind of kind of service. Um, so you got it done. It's live. Uh, what about getting traffic to it? What about posting it? What about a promotion of it? Yeah, there's no end in sight to that. Like we talked about, the top of it should sort of look as look a little bit like a postcard or poster. So you're going to want to socialize it like crazy. There's not, uh, there's no shortage of places that would be happy to um, publish it for you. There's a mm-hmm. lot of uh, infographic aggregators. SlideShare is, you know, ungated and unedited for the most part so you certainly want to don't want to leave them out pinterest is where people go infographic shopping so certainly don't leave pinterest out and uh, boy the list is long you know the guest blogging your blog yeah, i i get uh emails every day from companies that are proud of their infographics and they want me to either share them or run them mm-hmm. yeah and, and i think there's places where it's there's just like syndication platforms and any infographic you create isn't visually visual.ly a place where you can just post your infographic? I mean, these are those like syndication platforms for them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And there's more, there's a lot of those. Um, visually, I forgot how you spell it. I think you just spell it visually, but there's a dot before the Lee. Mm-hmm. I, and a funny story, uh, when I started uh, submitting them to visually, they were indeed uh, edited or they went through, you know, a human mm-hmm. and they were rejected all the time because they didn't have a lot of data in them. And so I don't always do that. And now I've sort of learned my lesson. I, I submit them if they do have a lot of data in them. I guess their definition, I'm not going to tell them they're wrong or right, but I think they're, you could make a case there's a difference between an infographic and a data visualization. And hmm. a lot of my really popular infographics are simply lists that look cool. And so those don't fly with that company. They want data. Is that still true? I think that you can submit a, I'm looking at the page now, you can submit a visual to visually, but regardless, there's the beauty of these things is that they are like an atomic element that just flies around the internet and that anyone can very easily share them, post them, promote them on their site. And that's kind of the idea, right? We want these things to travel. We are trying to syndicate them everywhere. It's sort of the opposite of that mortal fear some people have of duplicate content here we want the content to be duplicated it's designed to be very easily reshared reposted and sort of uh, uh you know syndicated anywhere all of my most popular pieces as measured by eyeballs in my five years of aggressive online content marketing or infographics yeah and i'm going to get into something here just very briefly that uh is a reason why a lot of people did these and still do these. If you put an infographic on your website and you make it very easy for the person to copy and paste a little snippet of code into their website, thereby sharing it with their audience, that little code that people copy and paste will include the IMG tag, the HTML tag that embeds the image, but it can also include a little link, a citation, citing the source, which is you. Infographics became an overused SEO tactic to grow links because they are the kind of thing that anyone can grab and put on their site with that tiny bit of code. It's a smart thing to make available to your visitors. If you post an infographic, that little box that lets them copy and paste the image and HTML link back to you, back to the source. Uh, Because if, uh, if a bunch of people do that, there are, there are blogs that will at very low effort and cost to themselves, uh, share high value content with their audience, but also pass a bit of authority back to you. So there is a link attraction strategy that was uh, very, very big with infographics for a long time. And some people still um, uh, use that to great effect. Yeah, you have to offer that. It doesn't mean people are going to do it. They, they can easily download the, you know, the piece, which is largely going to be, or usually going to be a JPEG or a, a PNG. Mm-hmm. But the well-intentioned republishers want you, want their audience to know where it came from. And that's the way to do it. 
Mm -hmm. Yep, sure is. So that takes us into our uh, final segment here. Barry, it's time for Mouse Traps and Cheese. All right. Well, I I could have talked about this topic for the rest of time. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will abbreviate this uh, this, um, blurb here to say, what about getting ideas for infographics? I didn't want it to be the focus of this podcast because it was the focus of our last podcast, Mm -hmm. which was getting ideas for topics. And your topics, you know, very well could be the same as as your topics for ebooks and blog posts but i think if this is your first time or you're struggling with infographics or you haven't done them in a while or you know you haven't seen the kind of traction that you want to and you're going all right what should i do an infographic about first thing you should do is go to my infographic which is called the great big list of infographic ideas and so i I rallied up every idea i could possibly think of and people have found that very valuable so of course we'll make that tip available but inside of an organization that has a sales department i say make a beeline for the sales department and say what do you got how have you answered your customers questions do you have any powerpoints the answer is very very likely to be yes the person who made it is very unlikely to be design savvy you know, and they're going to have a bunch of uh, relatively dull information with with um, probably important answers to important questions on there in the form of, you know, <laughs> graphs and, and maybe at best pie charts and, and um, you know, whatever kind of graphs. Mm-hmm. So I think the idea... Uh, the idea that you're looking for to answer some basic questions about your cust- uh, that your customers ask that could be a cool infographic is very likely to live right now in PowerPoints within your organization, especially in the sales department. Um, I've got my mousetrap tip here ready for you. And we talked about how infographics can actually put links into the people's websites in certain cases and bring visitors or bring authority back to your site. I've got a warning for everyone here about linking out to other people's websites based on some conversations I've had very recently with uh, clients and friends. Generally speaking, on a sales page, you've got a page on your website that's designed to convert a visitor into a lead or designed to convert a visitor into a sale. Uh, We're talking about products and service pages. Uh, This isn't an infographic page. This isn't a blog post. This isn't content marketing content. This is your conversion content. This This is the page that makes the money. And what this these company in this you know this page we were looking at had some some credibility stuff in there where it's like we're a big member a certified member of this organization they link to the organization. The problem with that is that if someone clicks that link they're now gone they left they're not on your website anymore. And as we always say, where there's traffic, there's hope. Keep your visitors on your websites and on a sales page. Anything be very cautious about linking to anything else. What we did was we quickly found that that. That uh, that association had a little badge. It was like a like a logo that they could put on their site, saying they were a member of that association. The logo will build more trust than the link would have. And the logo also won't send people away from their site. So my mousetrap tip for you is increase your conversion rate by removing exits from your sales pages. Be very cautious and deliberate about any time you're linking away from someone who's at the bottom of that funnel and who has a chance of converting. The attention ratio is the number of things they can do compared to the number of things that you want them to do, get that number down as close to one as you can, and uh, that will maximize your conversion rate, keeping the mouse in the trap and helping to uh, catch more of those, uh, those visitors and leads for you. (laughs) <laughs> we, we have a growing list of uh, mouse traps that don't snap, you know, uh, you know reasons why you're inviting your, your uh, visitors to leave. We'll have to create some content out of that. We have one more bonus for you guys. I'm going to invite uh, an expert to give us an infographics tip. Uh, let's see if this works. Uh, we're going to reach out to, let's get to some advice here, like a one minute tip from a total pro on how to use infographics, uh, for content promotion for, uh, many indirect benefits. Uh, here we go. Brian Dean. So my number one tip for infographics is to actively promote your infographic by emailing it to other people. So when I first started creating infographics, it was back in around 2010. And back then, infographics were a real novelty. Uh, Just creating an infographic was enough to stand out from the other blog posts and videos and things that were coming out at the time. They were unique, but that's really changed because hundreds of infographics come out every day, and it's really hard for an infographic to stand out, even if it's a good one. So what I recommend is actively emailing people your infographic to let them know that it's out. And the easiest way to do this is to find a popular infographic in your space 
and see where it's been shared around the web. You can do that with Google reverse image search. So you find the image, put it into Google reverse image search, and I'll show you all the places that infographic has been shared. Then it's just a matter of sending those people a friendly email, letting them know that you have an awesome infographic on the same topic. Wow, thanks. Perfect. So honored to have you here. Thanks for that, Brian. Boz, I think this was uh, this is a huge topic, but uh, we did a pretty good job with it uh, in the time we had. <laughs> You're calling me by my nickname. I don't know if our audience knows my nickname. Boz. Yeah. We call him Boz. On the island, they say Baz. But, um, yeah. <laughs> what, what was your question, Cressa? Uh, Where I think are we going? We, yep, we nailed it. Uh, another Content Matters in the books. Uh, thanks, Bazillion. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, uh, stay tuned for the upcoming episode that will tackle a whole bunch of ideas uh, and our best advice about website navigation. It's gonna-